Welcome this Sunday, the Sunday before Lent, to the rectory in Bonclody, where we say morning prayer. This prayer room is particularly appropriate today because our gospel reading is telling us of a time when Jesus and his disciples went apart to a quiet place up a high mountain to pray. And this room looks out on a mountain and it is a place of prayer. And I hope you will find a prayerful time this morning. The morning prayer order we're using is a new one in the blue book of common prayer recently um, published for Sunday worship in particular. And it is on the attachment that hopefully you got with your email link uh, to this YouTube video. And it can be printed out or watched on screen. Or simply listen and let us pray. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, as we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us. Let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us kneel sit or stand and confess our sins to God our Father. O God, our living Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you, we have broken your commandments, we have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine in our hearts. Our first reading from the second letter to the Corinthians will be read by Anya. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at the third verse. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 50, 
which we will read by alternate verses. The Lord, the mighty God, has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silence. Consuming fire goes out before him, and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above and the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful, who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning and, and shall, shall be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the first reading we had there from Second Letter to the Corinthians, in which we hear Paul writing about the light shining out of the darkness, and that light being Jesus Christ. And then we come to the Gospel reading from, from Mark chapter 9, and that light in Christ is made very clear to the disciples on that mountaintop. Well, Today we're thinking about coming away to pray, to listen to God. And it is worth remembering that Jesus did that quite often. He went away sometimes on his own, as in the desert for 40 days, and was with God. And in a way, it was a very important part of his interaction with people. He also went away when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane to really, really ask God, did he need to go through and to take this very, very difficult cup, the cup of death, um, which was ahead of him. And when he had an important decision to make in terms of choosing his disciples in Luke chapter 6, we find Jesus going on to a mountainside and praying all night. So there is an importance in finding time to pray, finding time to
to be alone with God. And the question for us today in our gospel is, why did Jesus go up to the mountaintop at this time? Well, he had a big decision to face. Was he going to go to Jerusalem? Because going to Jerusalem as a wanted man most likely was going to result in his arrest and his death. And so he went to the mountaintop to pray with God. And he took his three disciples, three key influencers, Peter, James and John. Because another reason for going up that mountaintop was to show his disciples that this was God's plan. This was not just some scheme that he had dreamt up himself. He had to show Peter particularly, as Peter in the previous chapter, in chapter 8, had rebuked Jesus, told Jesus he had got it wrong, told Jesus he was not going to die. They weren't going to let him die. They were going to fight and they were going to be violent if necessary to stop him from being killed. So Jesus really had to remind Peter and James and John that God's ways are not always man's ways. And thirdly, in going up the mountain, we got the thundering, hammering home of the message that Jesus is the Son of the Father. Because speaking from a cloud, as God often speaks from a cloud in the Old Testament, he said, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Don't be minding what everybody else is saying. Don't be minding even Moses and Elijah and all the wonderful prophets in the Old Testament because Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and that's why Moses was there and he is the fulfillment of all the prophecies and that's why Elijah was there. So they are left in the end with Jesus because that's all that is needed is the word of Jesus to guide us in what we need to do. And so we are then left with lessons for ourselves from this transfiguration story. Finally, what is it that is important here? Well, three things. First, to have a quiet place that we can go, that we can listen to God speaking in our heart, maybe through the Bible, maybe through other people and reflecting on words that we have heard other people say. Was that the word of God speaking through somebody else? Or maybe in nature, when we can appreciate and put in perspective where we stand in God's creation. Or in the silence. In that silence, that still voice speaks to us, the voice of God. And ultimately, those words which God spoke to the disciples are words for us today. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Amen. So let us pray the collect for the Sunday before Lent. Holy Father, you have revealed the glory of your love in Jesus Christ and have given us a share in your spirit. May we who listen to Christ follow faithfully and in the dark places where you send us reveal the light of your gospel. Amen. We say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask you to hear the prayers we offer in faith. For the peace that comes from God alone, for the unity of all peoples, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Michael, our Bishop, and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, that those who can would all live more simply. And for our government, and especially for the health service executive, that we will overcome this COVID-19 pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community around Bunclody, Clonigal, Kildavan and Kilrush. For our neighbours and our friends, that we might phone one another and stay safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, for all in hospitals and nursing homes, and for all in any need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying, for those who mourn, and especially remembering dear friends in our own community, grieving privately at this time. May they know they are in our prayers. We pray for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, whom we entrust to the Lord in hope, as we look forward to the day when we share the fullness of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the communion of all saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to God. For yours is the majesty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so the blessing. The God of hope, may he fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and with all those you hold in your heart this day and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.